So what's been trending this last week or last couple weeks actually is all these arm injuries, right? That's been the talk of the town all over Major League Baseball. I've had some massive conversations for people here locally, um, nationally, even some of my the kids who I coach with through Next Gen Baseball. It's been a big, big talking point because you're watching some of these young arms go down uh, to, and they're going under the knife. They're going to have the, the old Tommy John surgery or they're having arm issues or whatever it may be. And the conversation always comes up. What is the solution? Where is this game going? How come so many guys are dropping uh, when, it, when you talk about some arm injuries? Now, it is that time of year. I will say, I will start this segment, this trend segment, this trending segment with just to, just to say that this time of year, what happens is usually you have that off season and you're in a nice little rhythm. You go to spring training and then all of a sudden April hits and it, man, the intensity goes through the roof. We've seen it. You're not quite getting those uh, those numbers, those velocity numbers, or something may feel like it's a little bit off. You're facing hitters for the first time that actually matter. Man, a lot of things can go into it. So you do see this a lot in the month of April. However, the spotlight is on, man, because you're seeing all this top-end, high-end talent dropping with with um, having to get the Tommy John. Uh, a couple of them, you know, good examples. Shane Bieber, Spencer Strider, Yuri Perez with the Marlins. Some of the best pitchers in the game. One, two, three, dropping. So is it bad? Yes, it's bad. Is it going to get worse? I hate to say it. It's going to get worse. What is the solution? It's a tricky one. A lot of people are throwing around, is it the pitch clock? Is it the fact that the pitchers can't use the sticky stuff anymore? Are guys just trying to throw max velocity? It's a lot of these different factors that you're hearing about. I don't think you can really pinpoint it on one thing. And it's going to be really difficult um, for MLB to come up with this solution to say, all right, this is how we're going to protect arms. I think is it, it has to trickle down to the youth level, which we're going to get to in just a second. But my take is from a major league standpoint, now I had a chance to pitch. I pitched 17 years professionally. I've been that guy that has had to prove that he still has something left in the tank. Man, I remember throwing a bullpen session for a bunch of scouts at Peoria, the Peoria Sports Complex, trying to come back. It was me and uh, ex uh, former teammate Mark Lowe. We're lined up. It's January. It's 10 a.m. It's cold, Arizona. Uh, I remember I basically rolled out of bed, went down there. I wasn't quite sure what um, what this, the schedule was going to be. And they said, hey, man, you're good to throw in 30 minutes. And they said to me right before I was about to go pitch, some of these scouts for these teams like, hey, man, we just want to see some velo. That's all we want to see. I'm like, oh, man, really? 10 a.m. In, in January on a cold morning? So I go out there, and I'm just like letting it rip. And I'm pumping a couple 90s. So <clears throat> if you watch me pitch, you know that I wasn't throwing 100. Of 88 to 91, 92, that's where I lived. And I used to throw a bunch of strikes when I was having success, getting good counts and, and so on and so forth. And then I left the bullpen session. I was 88, 89, a couple 90s in there. And straight away, the first comments are like, hey, man, like the velocity is just not there. I'm like, hold on, guys, it's, it's January. Give me a couple of months. I can pump a 93 if you need it. But that's kind of where the game was going because the value of pitchers today is not that Greg Maddox style where we saw in the mid-90s where it's commanding the, the, the fastball. And hear me out here. I'm not agreeing with this. Uh, what I'm saying is the value lies in that upper 90s gas living at the top of the strike zone, how fast can you spin the baseball? So we all know that. So the stakes have never been higher when you're talking about how much you're going to push yourself in regards to throwing gas, all right? So what I mean by what what we tend to see there is that guys, when they're coming back, if they're in a situation like me, a Shane Bieber who's trying to resurrect, not resurrect his career, get, but get back to that level, they look around and they're like, man, these guys got to figure it out. I, that's where I have to live now. I have to live mid-90s up to 100. If I want to compete at this level, that's what it's going to take. And so the stakes have never been higher. And the technology has never really, I'll be honest with you, has never been better. The research has never been better to get you at that top velocity. And that's just where the game lives right now. And at the expense of the players. So you cannot tell a, call it Yuri Perez or Spencer Strides, like, hey man, listen, we're going to take a little off right now so you can get through a six-month season. They're going to be sitting there like, no, 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 man, this is how I compete. This is where I'm at my best when I'm throwing upper 90s with that completely ridiculous breaking ball that no one has seen a decade ago. That's just kind of where they where, where they live. And so that's what I mean by it's, it's only going to get worse before it gets better. Now, I think the real, um, when you talk about what can Major League Baseball do, 
you know, Justin Verlander talked about, you know, pinning a DH to your starting pitcher, making some rules like that. I think it's a little crazy to to start changing kind of the, the, the way you do things in regards to um, strategy and things like that. Plus, guys are still going to try and throw hard. Just like when hitters are still trying to hit bombs and not really worrying about swing and miss because the game pays for that. So I think the biggest thing and, and the real problem here it trickles down to is that youth level. And so what I mean by that, I coach a ton of kids, all right? <clears throat> I see it all the time. I'm watching kids, their training programs. They're all over social media. They know how to find out how to throw hard. They know how to get online and see where where they can they can um, get some you know weighted ball program or something and add velocity. Do they do it well? No, not really. A lot of times they're just they're really cavalier and they're just letting it eat. And so when I coach kids, one thing I try and make trendy is the recovery process. Okay, I try and make trendy taking time off. Kids travel ball in the United States, but even back in Australia too. It's year round now. Like for example, the Australian kids I know, <clears throat> if they want to compete in the States, their winter is, is uh, in the US, it's the summer, right? So they're going to kind of stay year round. In the States, right, with travel ball, these guys are playing tournaments in the middle of winter. And look, I I'm telling you right now, I guarantee you when I talk to Pete Woodworth, he's going to talk about taking time off. But playing different sports, I'm a huge advocate for that. But I think from a major league standpoint, what can the solution be? They've got to make trendy some of the stuff that is kind of boring. And what I mean by that is this, and I see it from a pro level too. Throwing hard is fun. <laughs> Not that I threw super hard, but throwing gas can be something that can be really fun. And it's stimulating, man. When you pop that rate, that, that, that you know, 95 on a radar gun for the first time, you're like, whoa, okay. I'm just going to keep trying to chase this. The recovery part, the stuff, the money put right back in the bank, it back into your savings account, it's kind of boring. I'm telling you right now, you're doing some of the, the, the routines, everything. It can be kind of boring. So I think that when you look at this, guys, human beings are not going to be able to sustain when you're talking about how hard they're throwing now. Guys want to live at 98, 99, max effort for short stints. You're going to have injuries. That's just kind of the way the game's going. There is really no solution. However, from a major league standpoint, what they can do is educate some of the youth players. What they can do is maybe put not restrictions, but maybe find some incentives for travel ball to, to have seasonal stuff, on season, off season. I think that's really, really important, especially when you're trying to build, you know, put some money back in the bank uh, when you're talking about strength programs and stuff like that. So if Major League Baseball can get involved in that regard, that's a big one. But man, it is tough when you're trying to tell a 16-year-old, listen, man, you want to throw gas? You got to do this boring stuff because you're not going to last. You might pop a couple in a pull down. You're not going to last when you're talking about sustaining a six-month season or even a college-level season. Dr. Andrews talks, talked about it as well. He said the fact that less pro ball guys are going in to get Tommy John than youth baseball players in his clinic towards the, the, some of these later years wild so that's kind of where it's going arm injuries is going to be a part of the game they're going to level out as the season goes on guys are just living at a high level now they've figured out ways to throw gas but man you really got to you you really have to influence and um, figure out a way for the youth side i think that's kind of your only solution there teach them how to pitch 